painting our texture pots with Ms. Bowley. All right, so what we're trying to learn is we're going to do some experimenting with a painting technique called dry brushing to enhance the texture on our texture pot, so to make it more noticeable. We're also gonna experiment with a couple different materials and we're gonna learn a little bit about the pottery of ancient Greece. All right, so for materials, I'm using my watercolor paints. I'm also using washable markers and non-washable markers, so I have Sharpie markers as well. And I have grabbed acrylic paints. You could try tempera paints as well if you have those at home. Um, markers will work. Uh, you will need a brush as well. Um, and I've got a, a little palette to put my paints on and a cup of water. All right, so some basic things about Greek pottery. So there are three kind of main styles of pottery that archaeologists and art historians have found from ancient Greece. And we're looking at the oldest one, which is called the geometric style. So in this style, you see a lot of kind of geometric patterns like zigzags, stripes, checkers, um, spirals sometimes. Um, so they, they would divide up their pots with horizontal lines and often have a different pattern in each line as you see in this picture. And they would uh, use uh, a tool to cut into the pottery. And so that the design that you see is actually cut in. So it's textural. If you were to touch it, you would feel. All right, and here are some examples of some geometric patterns that you might see on geometric style pottery. So you can use these as inspiration as you are decorating your texture pots today. All right, so I can tell that my salt dough pot is dry because it's quite hardened. Um, there is, There has been some cracking that's happened as it's dried and that is totally normal. And when you rub your hand over it, you'll notice that it is quite rough. Salt dough is kind of a rough dough um, that, that it does crack as it dries a little bit. But that's fine, as I mentioned before, it makes it look sort of more like an ancient pottery piece. So I'm going to use my texture board. I did keep it and let it dry. I'm going to use it um, as a way to kind of demonstrate some of the different techniques. So here is what happens when I use watercolor um, on my salt dough. So I wanna try to not use too much water on my brush because it can make the salt dough actually get like not dry anymore um, but I can add in a little bit more water and make my paint a little bit lighter or I can have less water to make it darker and I can kind of use my brush to push paint into the texture parts um, and then use water on top to kind of blend it all in so if I use watercolor what happens is sometimes uh, the water the watercolor paint will pool. See, as you can see, it's pooling in the lowered areas that are pushed in, and then that makes them more noticeable. So I like using watercolor paints um, on my salt dough. Um, it kind of enhances the texture. You can also do this same kind of idea with marker. So I'm just coloring over top of this textured area with marker and uh, it's not the marker is not going into the lowered areas and so that's kind of a problem because if I want it to all be colored in um, it won't work so what I will do is I will grab my paintbrush and dip it in just a little bit of water kind of uh, wipe it off on the rim of the cup and then I just brush it on top of the marker it kind of turns it into a paint turns it into a watercolor paint, basically. 
So if you don't have access to watercolors at home, feel free to use some washable markers. All right, so now I've painted some watercolor and water-based uh, water marker all over my texture board. I'm gonna show you the dry brushing technique. Um, you can do it with other paints, not just acrylic paint, but it works really well with acrylic paint because acrylic paint isn't very wet. So I'm taking just a tiny little bit of paint on my brush and I'm just brushing it over the surface lightly to enhance the texture. So let's zoom in. So basically I'm just painting the raised up areas. So those areas are darker and we can see them better. All right, so I'm going to just do some dry brushing in the inside of my texture pot here so that it makes my texture impression really, really noticeable. And I'm not actually painting kind of the background of the pot. I'm just going right in with the dry brushing technique um, so that, it, again, the texture stands out more from the light color of the clay and the dark color of the paint. So you'll have to make some decisions of what kind of paint, what kind of materials, and what kind of technique you're going to use. So you can paint the whole, the whole thing a color and then do dry brushing on top, or you can just do dry brushing. Um, yeah, it's up to you. So you have some choices to make for technique, material, and color. I'm choosing to use only black and red because I am kind of making mine um, linked to Greek pottery and the geometric uh, form that we looked at earlier. So I'm using only black and red. If you prefer, you can choose uh, two different colors, but let's limit our color choice or our color palette to two colors for this project. All right, so I'm going to speed up the video now and you can see me go through my process of painting my two texture pots. All right, so as I'm painting kind of the whole pot one color, I do need to let it dry before I go and do my dry brushing with my second color. So I've let it dry, and now I'm gonna do a little bit of a slowed down um, shot of watching the dry brushing technique. So this is with acrylic paint. It could be done with the markers. You could color over top. Uh, using just the markers, just coloring over the higher points. Um, but that's what I'm basically doing here is I'm just painting the higher points um, because my brush hardly has any paint on it and I'm just kind of uh, going back and forth. I'm not reloading my brush with paint very often either. I'm trying to keep uh, very little paint on my brush and very little water on my brush. And it's just bringing out those raised areas. All right, so we'll do another speed up of the video and we will stop when I start to do some detailing with markers. So I'm going to take a Sharpie marker. This will work with a regular marker too. You just have to be really careful that you don't get water on what you've drawn after. Um, and I'm drawing a geometric pattern on my pot. It is kind of difficult to draw a, something on a three-dimensional object. Um, so just do your best. And they may not be um, exactly the same, like every element of your pattern may not be exactly the same and that's fine um, because they're going to look they're going to read as the same um, when we look at when we look at the pots when they're when they're all filled with their patterns um, so I'm now thickening my line up a little bit and then I'm just going to go all the way around the pot with this particular pattern I don't have uh, the space to do more than one because this is such a small pot um, but I guess you could, if you wanted to do two separate patterns and have one along the top and one along the bottom and just do them smaller, that could be an interesting idea too. 
All right, so I'm gonna go fill that in and we'll speed up the video. All right, I'm almost finished doing my geometric pattern on my Greek-inspired texture pot. And there is my two finished pots. Um, I have a few more pictures of the finished product. So take a look. And I ended up adding some red paint onto my texture board, which actually looks kind of cool. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.